In this video, we will demonstrate proper benthic macroinvertebrate sample preservation with ethyl alcohol and how to pack and ship these samples under special provision A180. In the United States, ethyl alcohol is regulated as a dangerous good. Shipping benthic macroinvertebrates preserved in ethyl alcohol is also regulated. By following special provision A180, organizations can ship their biological samples preserved in ethyl alcohol without having hazardous shipping certification or incurring costly shipping bills. To ensure proper sample preservation, use 70 or 95 percent ethyl alcohol. You may either purchase or prepare this preservation solution. Use an alcohol hydrometer to verify the alcohol concentration. The target concentration of ethanol is 70%. So 95% ethanol is used in the field to account for the ethanol's dilution from water within the sample. As soon as practical, the preservative used in the field should be decanted and the sample jar refilled with fresh preservative. The process of decanting and refilling the ethanol within a sample may need to be repeated several times if the solution starts to look highly colored or the sample begins to have a rotting odor. So first double checking the ethanol once you get it received. The first thing you're going to do is decant all the material and the easiest way to do that is by taking a 0.5 uh, millimeter sieve placing it over the top so that you create a seal and start dumping out the contents. Now this should be done when you receive any sample just to make sure that everything is preserved in at least 75% ethanol at all times. stuff out from the screen as best you can. Probably need some good lighting and a pair of forceps, but I'm not seeing anything in here. Just to make sure. Okay, that's good. I have 100% ethanol. Most places have 95, which makes you do a little bit more math. So I'm going to pour this to where it's 750 milliliters. And we're going to double check this too a little bit later. So I've got it right there at 750. I'm going to fill the rest with water. Generally we use DI water, but you don't have to. And you're going to fill it all the way up with water to where you get to a thousand milliliters. And this is a hydrometer. So what you do is you bob it down in the middle, you let it go, and let it just settle by itself. So you read it and you look at the side and you see where it stops bobbing. And so you look at the water line and that line against the hydrometer will tell you your ethanol concentration. And this is looking at right at 76. Um, which should be about right. You kind of want it somewhere between 80 to 75 because it will still dilute a little bit in um, the sample itself. We emptied out most everything but the bugs and organic material out of this. We'll pour all of the sample into the container. Now you always want to make sure that all of the organic material and the bugs are no more than halfway full in this container. Otherwise, it'll continue to dilute um, with all the organic material, like you have a lot of algae in it. Okay. So you'll just want to make sure that it's right at half. Mm -hmm. About up to that first line. 
Now you always want to make sure also the outside is clean. Um, if you get any sediment or um, sand in there, this thing will leak. Um, so if you take like a damp cloth or something like that, just rub around the rim. So you can get a nice seal. And you also want to check the lid as well. Make sure you don't have any sand in it. So there we go, you tighten this up. You're going to want to mix it around a little bit until you see all the air bubbles from the bottom to make sure that all the sediment gets all preserved in ethanol and you don't have anything really caked at the bottom. Let's briefly go over the requirements of Special Provision A180. Your sample container must have no more than 30 milliliters of ethanol and you should include a sample label within this container. Your sample container is then placed into a plastic bag, which is then heat sealed. This combination is then placed into another plastic bag along with absorptive material, and this bag is then also heat sealed. You may then place this packet into a strong outer package such as a cardboard box of at least 200 pound test and filled with cushioning material. Enclose your chain of custody form and place special provision A180 labels on the outside of the box. Each box can contain up to one liter total of ethanol. So let's review. You have a biological sample of benthic macroinvertebrates which has been preserved in ethyl alcohol. These can be placed within a vial, or in the case of voucher specimens, multiple vials, but you cannot exceed a total of 30 milliliters of ethyl alcohol. Alternatively, you can take your unpicked sample and place it on a paper towel soaked in ethyl alcohol, wrap your sample gently, and place it into a plastic bag, which is then heat sealed. This works great for very large specimens. Place those on a paper towel that has been soaked in 30 mils of ethyl alcohol. Place this within a plastic bag, which is then heat sealed. Whichever container you choose to use, your sample container must be placed within a plastic bag and then heat sealed. This combination is placed into another plastic bag that also contains absorptive material, and this plastic bag is also heat sealed. You then take your sample and place it within a sturdy shipping container and fill it with styrofoam peanuts. On the outside of the box, add special provision A180 labels. And to your way bill, add the words not restricted and the special provision number A180. To pack your unpicked sample for shipping, remove the sample from its storage jar. Carefully pour the contents into a 500 micron mesh sieve. Remove your sample from the sieve and place it onto paper towels. Gently wrap the paper towels and place your sample and the towels into a plastic bag that will be heat sealed. Then add up to 30 milliliters of 70% ethyl alcohol and heat sealing the bag. Okay, so sometimes you have specimens that are large that you like to ship. So it's really simple. So you remove your specimens. Be sure to include any labels that you had. And you just you know put them on like a just a paper towel or something. And you put them into one of your sealing oil bags.
Now, you may be worried about sending something without preservative. You're allowed to add up to 30 mils of your preservative into this, this pack. So most of the labs use the, the vials like this, the, the little pop-top vials. Uh, you have to, to be careful of a certain couple of things. If you're going to ship these uh, by, uh, by air, you're going to have change in pressure, so the pop-tops can pop right off. If there's a change in temperature, they can pop off as well. So one of the tricks you can use is to use just electrical tape, some other type of tape, to uh, seal them up. This, even if you have a screw cap vial, uh, it doesn't hurt to, uh, to secure those as well. See this uh, air bubble here? Make sure that you leave enough headspace within the vial so that when the alcohol expands, it won't pop off the cap. So here's a sample that I'm getting ready to ship. I've already taped all the vials and I place them in a, a vial tray. It's a real convenient way of, of uh, packaging the vials. So we're packaging these vials up according to uh, what's called the Special Provision A180. It's uh, part of a, a large group of regulations that you have to follow when you package and then ship uh, any sort of uh, hazardous material, which ethanol would, uh, would definitely fall under. First step is you are supposed to heat seal your vials, you, so you can put them in the, the vial tray or there are other ways of, of binding vials together. We found this is a nice convenient way of doing it. So this is the machine we use. Uh, not only does it heat seal, it also vacuum seals. Which, uh, it's kind of nice to do that. You can use the vacuum seal uh, aspect on this, but we found that you uh, you need to be careful and not uh, set it on high, otherwise your vials will leak, or the, actually the vials can uh, rub up against each other and, and break during transit. So this is a, another method that I use for, for packaging the vials. I put the vials in a clump, rubber band them together just to keep them together, and then put them directly into the bag. So otherwise this is just like what we did with the, the vial tray. So this is the first step. Okay, so the next step is you have to, to put this in another bag and heat seal that. But on this, you have to add an absorbent material. Now this, uh, I think, could mean uh, vermiculite. That's probably the, the best one to use, but it's also kind of messy. So what I use is the heavy-duty shop back towels. Now this doesn't have to be pretty. This is the worst part. I'm trying to do this without coming apart. Okay, so this one's a little trickier because we got so much stuff in here. But basically, you do this for another step. You can do the vacuum seal again, or you can just heat seal it.
Okay, this is the finished product, and this can go, can go in your, your packaging as is. Okay, so you don't need uh, any special box for this type of shipping. Uh, this is just one that I got in the mail, and I'm repurposing. So you have plenty of cushioning material, usually means uh, styrofoam peanuts, maybe bubble wrap, whatever you have at hand. Make sure you have plenty of the cushioning, fill it to the top, and then you're ready to go. Uh, you may have to have a chain of custody form. Put in your box, or what other, whatever other things you need in there. Seal up your box. And then you're ready for labels. So, from the two label, uh, FedEx likes you to leave plenty of space in the box so they can put all their labeling in. And then when we ship under this uh, special provision A180, you're required to label the box.